The week starts on a slow note. US dollar gives back gains. Equities consolidate as investors try to guess the next pocket of the market, which could benefit from the softening monetary policy outlook from the major central banks and also the AI developments. So in this context, we see that energy and commodities are brought back on the table. So welcome. This is Swiss Codes. Daily Market Talk. So this week kicked off with a pause in the equity rally on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean as the Japanese Nikkei index is mostly flat this Tuesday at the time I'm shooting this video following yesterday's threat from well, a Japanese official that they would actually intervene in the FX markets to stop the excessive bleeding in the Japanese yen if the sell-off gets out of control. So this morning may have slowed the sell-off in the Japanese yen yesterday and prevented the dollar yen from exceeding the 152 level, but, but, but there hasn't been a notable move to the downside for the dollar yen. The new expectation now is that, well, the Japanese will actually intervene if the dollar yen surpasses the 152 level. So voila. Elsewhere, the dollar index gave back some field yesterday as new home sales in the US unexpectedly fell in February, while a 66 billion US dollar worth of a US two-year bond auction, which apparently was the biggest on record, saw a tepid demand from investors and the yield settled near the 4.5% level. The 2 to 10 year of the US yield curve remains inverted, mind you, for the longest stretch ever. And there is no recession whatsoever in sight just yet with the US expected to print a 3% growth last quarter, down from near 5% printed a quarter before. And the Federal Reserve's massive balance sheet and the huge, huge U.S. government spending probably explain a part or most of why the higher yields in the U.S. never slow the U.S. economy, even though, even though the Fed Chair Jerome Powell loves to put everything on the back of, well, the pandemics and its distortions shoulders. Now, Friday's core PC print, which is the Federal Reserve's favorite go-to inflation, may print a 0.3% monthly rise and a stable 2.8% yearly rise. But at this point, I've actually come to conclude that nothing but nothing will derail the Federal Reserve's rate cut expectations. And the fact that the Fed will on top of it, slow the pace of its QT is just soothing for risk sentiment. So there is nothing that looks alarming for risk takers at the moment, apart from hefty valuations, of course. So the US economy remains, well, quite robust. Yes, we do see some weak data here and there, but overall, the economic data is not alarming. The Fed overlooks the recent rise in inflation in the US saying that they knew that the road to 2% target would be bumpy and that they are not intimidated for now. So the S&P 500 opened the week slightly lower but that's probably just some consolidation and we could maybe see some profit taking before the long Easter weekend but the market volatility remains quite low for the moment. Now in the space of individual news that I find worth talking about. Well, Boeing gained yesterday after a CEO announced to quit. Then super microcomputer jumped more than 7% at yesterday's trading session on AI buzz as JP Morgan started covering the stock with an overweight rating, while Apple, the good old Apple, remained offered near the $170 per share level, despite chatter that the company could actually team up with the Chinese Baidu. So that's the Chinese equivalent of Google that's also active in AI, in hope to boost its iPhone sales in China. Now, Broadly speaking, I think that Apple's recent efforts to catch up with the AI developments through partnerships are interesting. 
because if they get the right partnerships and if they find the right products to offer on their devices, well, investors could actually tolerate the lack of in-house developments of AI at Apple. Because at the end of the day, while well, Apple consumers, the iPhone users will prefer buying the right AI than Apple developed AI. But the problem with that is, well, when you rely on tools that are developed by a third party, well, you also have to accept that competition will also get them and use them. And in the particular case of Apple here, well, the Korean Samsung has already got its smartphones powered by Baidu in China, so it will be hard for Apple to well, stand out with the same, the exact same offering. But zooming out of Apple, I think that the next phase of the AI should be the extension of the benefits and the rally from the companies that power the AI tools like your good old semiconductors and data centers and cloud businesses to companies that actually implement these AI models that they invest in and grow their business models on it. So Apple could fall in the second category if, of course, it finds the right partnerships and the right strategy. For the moment, investors remain quite skeptical though. Now, as I was saying at yesterday's episode of Market Talk, well, a period of loosening monetary policies around the world will likely support the equity valuations beyond the big technology stocks. Back bond valuations, but also commodities. So yes, yes, I am, well, changing the subject here from technology to commodities. And well, in this context, Goldman Sachs, well, they say that they expect raw materials to return 15% over 2024 as manufacturing recovers on lower interest rates and the Chinese stimulus helps the market and geopolitical risks also persist. So they believe that copper, Aluminum, gold and oil will see higher demand, but they also think that it is still too early to call it the size of N to the bear market in nickel, in cobalt and in lithium. So copper futures trade with a 20% discount from their pandemic peak levels on COMEX, while gold console is near the $21.70 per ounce level, close to the all-time high levels reached just earlier this month. U.S. crude, on the other hand, is back above the $82 per barrel level this morning as oil bulls eye a further advance toward the $85 per barrel mark in the continuation of the actual positive trend. Now note that trend and momentum indicators remain supportive of a further rise in oil prices and we are not yet close to the overbought territory. So some investors also think that AI uh, investors, AI portfolios should also invest in energy that is necessary to fill all these hefty and powerful AI computations and the name of the controversial uranium is being pronounced while well, quite timidly by some and not timidly by others. Uh, but that's something that we hear a little bit increasingly these days. The uranium features have got a positive spin, a significant positive spin since the war in Ukraine started, yes. And despite the efforts to shift toward alternative and clean energy sources like wind and solar, for example, none of these technologies offers a sufficiently large scale to satisfy our humanity's increasing hunger for energy, except for uranium. That being said, if commodities around the world perform well, well, the British FTSE 100 index, which is heavy in energy and mining stocks, should also see a boost in appetite. So the index rebounded more than 3% since last week as some investors now try to divest from the US and the European stocks that are near record levels to invest in the British blue chip stocks that trade with around 50 percent discount to their western peers yes around 50 percent discount so that means that the FTSE 100 is relatively cheap right now it offers an interesting exposure to commodities and the index could claim a fresh high above the 8000 p level if appetite for commodities around the world continues to rise on the back of softer outlook for global central bank monetary policies and persistent geopolitical tensions. 
So this is all for today. I'm Ipekos Kardeshke and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please do not forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading. Thank you.